the driving theme behind I Look Forward to Colchis is about rifts and divisions and the, the barriers between people. So the story of the Golden Fleece uh, is very, very old. It's like a Justice League of ancient Greek heroes. Um, the Robert Graves version, which was the first one that I read, the first uh, Jason the Argonauts version that I came across, apart from children's stories, really hones in on the concept of different islands, for example, that the Argo goes to, have their own laws of nature, their own laws of physics, their own belief systems that are cut off from each other. The whole psychosis, or the whole psyches are differently shaped in different geographical areas. In the story of the Golden Fleece, um, it doesn't actually go through, through it much in the Voyage of the Argo, but Robert Graves, through whatever sources he had, um, discusses in great detail how Phrixus brought the Golden Fleece to the end of the world, how he brought it to Colchis, and it, it's a journey in and of itself, and the journey that he went on was so theatrical and so dramatic and so intense and such a story that it gave the Aetans or Colchians um, something to latch onto. The significance of the Golden Fleece will be different if you steal it, if you succeed in stealing it, than it would be if it remained a sacred object to the to the Aetans or the Colchians. A Hallmark film called Jason and the Argonauts and once Jason got the fleece off of the tree, its shine faded. And it went from gold to a, more of a grey colour. It just went dull. And everyone has different agendas. And one person's agenda, one person's holy mission, or you know, life course will go this way and another person's will go this way and will intercept and cut off um, the first guys. So in pursuing your thing, you screw someone else over. That's, the st that's any epic really. That's what an epic is like. So. I thought about people that I know who want to uh, isolate themselves and, and want to really develop their own uh, understanding of, of their lives by excluding parts of life that they can, you know, excluding outside influences, making an enclave, making their own laws, making their own rules not um, being too affected by what other people are doing. A lot of people are like that. Jason's uncle sends him to the end of the world to get to Colchis to get the Golden Fleece. And he says, if you do that, I'll give you the throne. He was fooling him because he thought the Golden Fleece couldn't be gotten. They have to build the ship. They have to go through physical trials. They have to slay monsters. They have to physically attain this Golden Fleece through physical Olympic, you know, they are Olympians, um, level uh, tasks. Um, it's real. It's real. Uh, physical danger in the context of the story and you don't really know what the abstract implication is you don't really know what you're trying to achieve 
theoretically. You don't really know what the significance of the Golden Fleece is to you um, until you've finished the task. When Jason does receive the Golden Fleece, it's no longer what it was when he was sent after it. It's a different thing. It's a different object. It has a different function. It has a different purpose. It's tainted. Um, it's a tainted version of what it was. But, at the same time, it's given life because it's no longer the, the people of Colchis pretending a connection to someone else's story, pretending to have something to do with Phrixus, pretending to have uh, reached some kind of apex, in intellectual apex, because of a journey that somebody else went through. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was an idea. Um, the other thing in the chorus, now the chorus was just a li literal summary of, of the, of the story. It was very, very literal. I mean, I didn't even have, um, any uh, abstract concepts going through my mind when I wrote it. It was literally a golden ram skin is hung up by an altar, um, and that is the altar of Zeus near but not where the infant left her arms uh, I think that Jason's mother left Jason in the temple of Hera or Juno um, there are sacred stone walls twixt the mother and the father mother's in the temple of Hera with her baby boy father's outside getting stabbed, getting killed uh, Jessen's bloodshed, you know, violence. There's the sacred stone walls separating them. Um, mother is protected, father is in danger. Uh, the hero and his world. Hero is protected as a baby. His world is full of danger and full of strife and bloodshed. Um, Maybe I shouldn't explain that, 